Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two of this news bulletin for today, Wednesday, July 25th, 2012. I'm Darko, my website is ggnonline.com, and also there is a poll on there if you'd like to uh, vote on that. It has to do with the recent massacre and the possible passage of a UN treaty uh, basically for firearms that is raising alarm among gun rights advocates so you can go in there and vote on that if you'd like also if you'd like to help GGN you can donate there as well it would definitely be appreciated okay so we finished up in part one with this article right here uh, from Land Destroyer from the 23rd of this month and it was talking about how the news isn't reporting certain stories or if they are they're completely slanted towards the West and they are backed by the Zionists who want to attack Iran, but they cannot do that until Syria falls, uh, i.e. they get a change of uh, government there in Syria. So they're going to do anything necessary, and that means false flag attacks, uh, funding terrorist operations, uh, assassinations, and everything else, especially uh, media manipulation. So some of these stories that we talked about were Operation Damascus Volcano that followed weeks of warnings of impending NATO psychological operations. The second was dissent in the UN Security Council was not confined to only Russia and China, talking about Pakistan and South Africa. And what we finished with was what? The Arab League ultimatum that was rejected, of course, by Syria, but also Iraq. So uh, Al-Qaeda Al promptly punished Iraq with a slew of killings. And yeah, that was this was uh, the first one, 91 killed in Iraq's deadliest day this year, uh, followed by another one. Slaughter in Iraq as 145 are killed and 379 more are wounded. A second day of intensified attacks that left those people uh, dead. They said the attacks, mostly bombing, seemed to focus on security personnel in Sunni-dominated areas. Then this was followed by what? The third day. Attacks continue across Iraq. 17 killed, 60 wounded. At least 17 Iraqis were killed, 60 more wounded in a third day of elevated violence. The holy month of Ramadan, which began last week, was preceded by a short period of relative quiet. And you always hear in the news about suicide bombers and screaming Ali Akbar, uh, but many of these are remote devices, the remotely activated bombs, uh, such as buses and, uh, and other types of things, a sticky bomb, but uh, they're killing children. And this is uh, possibly, quite possibly, being backed by the West for Iraq not supporting this Arab League uh, ultimatum. So, you know, you talk about crimes against humanity, but they will never be in an international court. Not Clinton, not any of these uh, leaders of these countries that are promoting this. So, then we go to the Council on Foreign Relations, who is basically uh, who these people, these representatives go to for advice. That's right. So the author of this article is Richard Haas. He's the president of the Council on Foreign Relations. He titled this article, Syria Beyond the United Nations Veto. So there doesn't really matter, right? They're going to move on beyond that, past that. Remember what I was saying about uh, even though they didn't, even though uh, Syrian leader Assad has not falled yet or been uh, taken down, they're going to go ahead and move uh, forward, the Pentagon that is. The Russian and Chinese veto of the UN Security Council draft resolution that would have declared the situation in Syria a threat to international peace and security extended the United Nations diplomatic mission headed by Kofi Annan, of course, and set the stage for new sanctions and possibly UN authorized military action was hardly surprising. More important, it is not all that significant. What explains the veto is not just Russia and China's opposition to the use of military force to unseat uh, basically the Assad government, something which would have required another Security Council resolution in any event. They are also uneasy with anything that legitimizes international involvement. Well, it's like, I wonder why international involvement in what they see as the domestic affairs of countries. Both Russia and Chinese governments fear precedents that could be turned against them. Well, yeah, they could be. By contrast, the United States and many others, i.e. Israel and the UK, believe outsiders have a responsibility to act if government mistreats their citizens. Hmm. So, they, well, I, I don't think I need to go on, on a limb here and say that the United States mistreats its own citizens. 
uh, let alone carries out terrorist attacks against sovereign nations. But it goes on and it says, if nothing else, it's time for a moratorium on the use of the phrase international community in situations such as this one where no such consensus exists. So, see, no people aren't on board with this. They're losing, so now they're going to play the word game. And let's not call it an international community because you know what? They don't represent the entire planet, but they act as if they do. This is interesting how he, interesting what he says here because <laughs> this is exactly, this is what he's calling for, Council on Foreign Relations, the CFR. And many of the leaders, uh, like Hillary Clinton and them, are members of this Council on Foreign Relations. So this is not democratic at all. And watch, all the stuff that we just covered in the media, he's calling for, right? Last, the United States and other like-minded governments should not equate the United Nations with multilateralism. Is he talking about unilaterals? Uh, decision making nor should they see the UN as having a monopoly on legitimacy even though they really want them to have that uh, because people don't want the UN in the United States says so to the contrary they should form a coalition of the willing and able they're talking about terrorists Al-Qaeda composed of NATO countries like Arab governments ie Saudi Arabia Qatar and others that are committed to increasing sanctions against uh, not just Syria, but other countries supporting it. They're talking about countries that do business, that have been doing business for decades with Syria, that rely on Syria, that Syria relies on them, like Turkey with water and electricity to Syria, building up the strength and political appeal of the Syrian opposition, i.e. starving people, killing innocent people, uh, and using them as pawns in this to get to the regime change is what he wants. And he admits that up top, pressing for war crime indictments against Assad and his inner circle. So, planning for strikes against the Syrian chemical munitions, which is what Israel is calling for, and preparing for a post-Assad Syria, which is the Pen what the Pentagon's doing. And then he finishes by saying that as hard as, as it is proving to bring about the regime's downfall, it will likely to prove far harder to manage a transition to something stable. They're talking about when they create... Uh, sectarian civil war which is what they're doing in order to get that regime change and democratic to keep it democratic right? they're talking about turning it into a uh, non-sovereign international corporatist state uh, for these international corporations it says here strike Syria if needed op-ed says Israel has the right to attack Syria to prevent non-conventional arms from falling into the wrong hands and if the above requires the use of force in sovereign Syrian territory, so be it. Israel does not have the privilege to expect and hope for the best in this case. Or, And now we move to Turkey as part of the, uh, or as the destabilization of Syria takes place and spills over into neighboring countries, a, a possible secession is looming. Kurdish refugees are crossing into the neighboring Iraq. It goes on there and says that it's not so much a matter of choice as necessity. The rebels are overwhelmingly hostile to the Kurds, both because of Arab nationalistic rhetoric used by their leadership and because they're enjoying strong support from Turkey. And it actually goes on and it says that for Syrian Kurds caught in the middle, many are opting to flee the country into neighboring Iraq, Kurdistan, where the KNC leadership enjoys a good relationship with the Iraqi Kurdish government. So eventually, it says here, all this is establishing de facto Kurdish-run territories, but may eventually set the stage for a full-scale secession and the creation of a Kurdish state. Then we have Iraq to set up camps for Syrian refugees. Iraq will set up camps at its two at two of its three border crossings with Syria to provide support for Syrian refugees fleeing the conflict in their homeland. A government spokesman said on Tuesday, and not all is well at the little refugee camp or FEMA camp in Turkey. It says eight injured in riot at Syrian refugee camp in southeastern Turkey. Eight people are injured during a riot in the camp that uh, saw the lowering of the Turkish flag. On Sunday, after a group of 1,500 ethnic Turkmen refugees from Syria were added to the camp despite its poor condition, including food and water shortages. And among these Syrian refugees, I was just looking for the article now, or articles, and I couldn't find any of them, but I remember them being painted all over the mainstream media about um, the rebels actually going here, uh, regrouping and stuff, and resting, and then going back. So, And switching gears to Iran, Barack of Israel says, nuclear Iran is more dangerous than uh, strike. Dealing with a nuclear Islamic Republic could be substantially more dangerous saying that sanctions and diplomacy is not enough. 
So the defense minister has alluded yet again on Wednesday to a possible strike on Iran's nuclear facilities, suggesting that the military option could be preferable to a nuclear-armed Islamic Republic. Then they go on to say large weapon caches in the region could fall into the wrong hands. So this is just like the chemical weapons, WMDs in Syria. So let's go ahead and strike them because they get in the wrong hands, i.e. Hezbollah. And let's go ahead and strike Iran as well. Meanwhile, Natyanu hinted that alterations to Israel's defense budget could be imminent in the light of escalating violence in Syria. Extra Saudi forces are being deployed with Iran in mind. They've deployed more troops in the oil-rich eastern province and canceled some military leave amid worries of fresh unrest stoked by Iran. Saudi and U.S. sources say this limited mobilization reflects worries about possible military conflict with Iran, the war of succession in Syria, and Sunni-Shiite tensions in neighboring Bahrain. And some of you have probably already heard this, but Iran pledges to deploy warships in the Atlantic and the Russians as well, Russian warships to exercise in the Atlantic. This is from July 11th in Mediterranean. The Russian Defense Ministry announced forthcoming fleet combat training missions in Atlantic, Mediterranean, Black Sea. Lebanon's ready to remove obstacles to relations with Iran. Lebanese president has lauded Iran's efforts to strengthen bilateral cooperation, saying Beirut is ready to remove obstacles in the way of the expansion of relations with Tehran. In his message, Ahmadinejad said the victory which led to humiliating defeat of the Israeli regime and its regional stooges will, quote, be undoubtedly an unforgettable memory, end quote, of the Lebanese people's resistance. Israel unleashed the all-out offensive on Lib Lebanon, sorry, six years ago under the pretext of releasing Israeli soldiers allegedly captured by the Lebanese resistant movement Hezbollah in the southern border region of the country. The invasion claimed the lives of nearly 1,200 Lebanese people, most of them civilians. Israel's implosion is imminent, says an Iranian lawmaker. He says the rampant domestic injustices in Israel have rendered the recent self-immolations inevitable, and the regime's implosion is imminent. He says given the injustices that exist, even with regard to the settlers inside the occupied territories, emergence of such conducts of self-immolation was predictable and I believe we will soon witness the disintegration of the Zionist regime of Israel from within. So what does Israel do? Israel orders demolition of eight Palestinian villages for Israeli Defense Forces training sites. They've ordered eight of these villages in the West Bank to be raised claiming uh, the land is needed for military training. Hundreds of Palestinians are also to be displaced despite evidence that the village has existed since 1830. I've noticed in uh, news recently they've been having electrical problems, problems with energy, uh, not enough. Uh, also uh, about raising taxes and then we just uh, talked about them altering their defense budget. So this is the story, two southern residents attempt self-immolation. So two more Israelis attempted to basically burn themselves to death late Sunday night and on Monday, the sixth and seventh attempts in just over a week. So these self-immolations are usually, uh, the purpose is to gain attention, usually global attention to some kind of crisis, internal crisis. Uh, so what happened? The man was brought to an area hospital for psychological evaluation. One of them included a 50-year-old disabled IDF veteran. Arab nations debate whether to compete against Israel eight years after the Iranian world judo champion forwent the medal to avoid meeting Israel on the map. It says here Egypt and Algeria are preparing for possibility that the lottery could place their uh, athletes against Israeli competitors. So they're wondering if they should stand on the podium and salute the Israeli flag. Israel says they're underwhelmed, not overwhelmed, underwhelmed by surprise Munich Memorial. Families say the unannounced minute of silence in London was a PR stunt aimed at deflecting criticism against the IOC. Remember Obama was basically talking about a minute of silence? This is what they're talking about. It was actually uh, rejected. Israeli officials had said that they wanted the event marked not at some side ceremony, but rather the opening ceremony attended by tens of thousands of people. And following the German court ruling, two Swiss hospitals announced they will refrain from performing circumcisions along with Austria as well. Then Perez, the Israeli president, signs credentials for the first African-born Israeli 
Ethiopian envoy. You probably remember this news. CIA is taking over as Ethiopian regime crumbles. This is the same country that's launching these drone operations over Somalia that the UN says poses a danger to air traffic. And remember an Arab Spring scenario in Central Asia, 42 were killed in Tajikistan. And U.S. will leave Afghans better than the Soviet Union.